Welcome to our webinar, Empowering Library Leaders and Diversity Worldwide, the Sub-Saharan Africa Experience, presented by EFLA Management of Library Association Section, MLAS, in collaboration with the New Professional Special Interest Group, NPSIG. We are proud to present the fourth event in our new webinar series to empower new library leaders worldwide and foster diversity within the profession. Over the course of six webinars, library associations from countries in each IFRA, IFLA regional division will present opportunities they provide for new and senior librarians including leadership opportunities and how these library associations are fostering diversity within the library profession and leadership. The webinar format includes interactive opportunities to engage attendees in conversations about those topics that will elicit best practices and recommendations and the needs of new and senior professionals. The insights gained from these webinars will then inform and enrich the MLAS open session at the IFLA Congress in Dublin, which will focus on the same theme. This webinar series is connected to the IFLA Strategy 3, Connect and Empower the Field specifically. 3.2 says support virtual networking and connections. We will develop a spirit of continuous collaboration in the library field through virtual networking tools that enable every librarian to be involved and engaged in a global conversation. 3.3, empower the field at the national and regional levels. We will enhance the capacity of the library field to deliver actions tailored to regional and national characteristics and requirements by strengthening library associations, institutions, and networks at all levels. We are pleased to feature library associations and librarians from all regions of the world in this webinar series. Our agenda today includes library association sharing their resources about leadership and diversity interactive conversations attendees please join an interactive meeting room then we return to the main webinar room to hear from seasoned and veteran librarians new to leadership sharing information about their experiences and path to leadership i would like to thank the chair and each one of the members of our section, MLAS, supporting this effort and dedicating their time and energy to make these webinars happen. Big thanks to the leadership of IFLA New Professionals Special Interest Group and their convener, Magdalena Gomoka, for supporting the webinar, technical aspects, and the many logistics. Your collaboration is valued. Before we continue, please turn off your microphone and camera during the presentation and note that this meeting is being recorded. Now, I would like to ask Magdalena Gomolka, convener of IFLA New Professionals, to join us for a special section. Thank you, Loida, for introducing me and uh, new professionals. And welcome everyone on this webinar. Uh, my name is Magdalena and I uh, am from new professional team. And now we would like to uh, find out where are you from and invite you to use Mentimeter website uh, to write down your countries. So uh, please, uh, right, grab your mobile phone and go to your website uh, and to the website uh, menti.com uh, there is on the chat box and write down a code 9830-78-46. I will share my screen and I will show you the code and the results. 
of our voting, uh, thanks to Mentimeter, uh, we will see uh, from which countries are you. So we see Puerto Rico and USA. And also, so we have a few minutes to find out more. I will also go to Ver and write down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see that 15 people voted. And you can also use our chat box to write in your countries. So um, welcome again. We are very happy that uh, you are with us. And I give microphone to Loita. Thank you so much, Magdalena. That was really a very nice exercise to see everybody's uh, countries. Um, we are all very proud of our countries, so we can see them on screen. Now I will continue sharing my screen. And now I would like to welcome our speakers. And I would like to thank each one of them for their time and for accepting the invitation from the Management of Library Associations from IFLA and the new professionals from IFLA who are presenting this event today. <clears throat> our speakers today are, and I invite you to look at our website uh, for more information on each one of the speakers. And they are Alim Garga, president of the African Library and Information Associations and Institutions, AFLIA, president of Cameroon Library Association, member of the governing board of the National Archives of Cameroon, a member of IFLA MLIS. Nazim Hardy, he's president of the Library and Information Association of South Africa, LIASA. Namutenya Hamwala, Deputy Director for the Directorate of Namibia Library and Archive Services uh, that includes the National Library of Namibia, the National Archives of Namibia, Education Library Service, the Ministerial Library Service, and the National Public Library Service. Namutenya is also a member of the IFLA MLAS. We have Samuel Bentil Agri. He is the immediate past president of the Ghana Library Association and a librarian at the Medical um, library uh, in Ghana. Then we have Lynn Gibril, president of the Botswana Library Association, as she's also an educator and librarian at the University of Botswana Library. Welcome, everyone. We will start with Alim Garga, continue with Nazim Hardy, and then Namutenya will close our first section on library associations. Welcome, Alim. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and maybe good evening also. It is um, a great pleasure and an honor for me in my capacity of um, AFLIA president to take the floor and to make my presentation. First of all, allowed me to express my sincere gratitude to organizer and especially to IFLA for this commitment. Let me say a special thank to Magdalena for her help. Let me begin but by background of AFLIA. AFLIA, African Library and Information Association and Institution AFLIA, is a continental association of library and information association services and workers in Africa. The organization primarily give a voice to the African library sector and empower librarian for services and program that directly impact the development of their users, user communities. AFLIA is a corporate and individual membership based on organization. With current membership from 
38 African countries. Let me talk about leadership training for librarian. Now, effective leadership at different level has become the vital factor need for libraries to remain relevant and excel in the even evolving 21st century learning and information sector. Leadership training and various type has been identified as one of the major pathways for building the capacity of African librarian to deliver services that promote sustainable development. These are means to equip African librarians with the ability to, to cope with and drive innovative service as the information needs and consumption partners and users committee in the continent change expand contract and take different technology educational cultural and social use librarian has leaders that means empowering libraries with leadership skills and tools that has the potential to create ripple effect within the user committee community such training helped to mark them out of the leaders within the library sitting and in the entire community where they provide information service thereby heightening the relevance of libraries and attracting as much good ways as possible to the institution ladies and gentlemen haflia has two core leadership programs the first one is INELI SIF. Affilia partner with the Global Libraries GL initiative of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to deliver leadership training for public librarians through the international network of emerging library innovation, Sub-Saharan Africa. Two cohorts made of early career public library. 32 countries in the first cohort from 14 African country, countries and 31 in the second from 11 African countries. And from this year, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, Africa, AFLIA is making the program local. That is in countries in order to manage cost since the funding of this has ended. INELI staff. The goals of INELI are to create a pool of future library leaders to bring to build and sustain public library to the continent second one explore on or address national and regional library issues that have potential to stimulate expand or improve public library service and the third is to end enhance the leadership skills of new professionals from a variety of countries to enable them redefine public library for the future to meet the unique needs of people in their respective countries. These calls include advocacy, innovation, change management, conflict resolution, community engagement, risk management, project planning, teamwork, 
using data to make decision, time management, and the last is my library make a difference. There's also Ineli Rolo. For Ineli Core 2, Aflia, Tweaked the Coral Column has a beat and add project as part of what young leaders should learn. This enable interaction with members of the community to understand their need, then figure out the type of information service to provide and answer on that, to that. Designing information services and program with available, available resources. Amazing project were carried out that cover information service and human rights, environment, sustainability, financial literacy, open source software, among other services. The second program, ladies and gentlemen, dear yes, colleague, AFLIA Leadership Academy, AFLAC. This is a leadership enhancement program for librarian leaders at middle management level. AFLIA has run two courts, which admitted 38, 37 participants from public library sector. The program, which funded by um, the Global Library Initiative of the Bill and Medica Gate Foundation, and model after the PLA Leadership Academic. The impact of the impact of Leadership Academic, a number of the attendees become outstanding library leaders in their communities, as led to the content being reduced to cover all types. This course include in the Leadership Academic effective leadership, change management, advocacy, innovation, partnership, community projects, and monitoring. Through AFLAC library leaders is to understand what library leadership means, and then given the opportunity to practice and learn leadership qualities. Recognize how to build social capital and apply the concept understand the opportunity of it, be integrated in the network of librarian, read to lead and take the national and the African development agenda forward. The third one orders program, AFLIA has run series of webinars for all types of librarian that focus on making them ROH that can be applied skywise in a specific area of information. AFLIA carry out biannual conference where there is knowledge sharing and networking to support in the growing of library leaders for Africa. Unfortunately, dear colleagues, Due to the COVID, COVID pandemic, the last conference was virtual. And hope, hopefully, next year will be physical in Accra 2023. In this regard, permit me, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, to conclude. Leaders are reliable for the success of an organization. A major means of ensuring that librarian in different type of library met up the challenge of the day through equipping these professionals with adept leadership Sheep scale. AFLIA has been doing this, thereby assisting African library to understand, to develop their abilities to adapt proficiently 
and strategically to changing times. We need, we continue to need Africa, IFLA support this initiative. We don't leave Africa. We don't leave IFLA for any questions. For more details, please write to us at membership.aflia.net. Aflia created in Africa by Africans and for Africans. Allow me, please, to say. Shukran, Murakoze, Shikoma, Masivita, Nkosi, Siabonga, Zikomo, Diabonga, Kea, Leboa, Asante Sana, Amesenke, Ditumse, Mungo de Jarama and merci beaucoup. Gracias. Thank you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alim. That was beautiful and truly diverse. This is the spirit we need in, in IFLA and also in all our regions. Beautiful uh, and truly diverse. Um, it is great to know how um, AFLIA, which is covering such a vast uh, region and also a uh, diverse region, has uh, partnered with INELI to bring leadership uh, opportunities to the membership and also has developed their own uh, membership um, opportunities through the AFLAC library leaders, the, the courses, the webinars for different types of libraries and librarians. So this is uh, great. And we hope that um, those listening to this information are encouraged, motivated, and can replicate um, this type of examples. Now we continue. Thank you so much, Alim. We could go with um, our next speaker, Namutenya. And that, that will give um, Nazim more time, and then maybe, maybe you can work with him uh, behind scenes. All right, Namutenya, will you be ready? Uh, yes, Leida. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Then we will welcome Namutenya uh, from Namibia. Welcome. Thank you. Let me just um, share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see. And okay. your presentation. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, as it said, my name is Namutena Amwala. I'm a deputy director for Namibia Libraries and Archive Service, and also a chairperson for National Information Workers Association of Namibia. So I would um, give a short background on the leadership trainings that we have done in Namibia or the attempt that we have done to actually strengthen leadership um, for the librarians in the country. So I would like to say the librarian professional or the profession in the country is very um, young, one can say, and um, its full recognition actually started around the year 2000. However, the National Information Worker Association of Namibia has started a long time ago, and it was known as NUA by then. It was started in 1990, and that is the um, year that our country actually got um, its independence. So much of the effort has been done in getting the professional recognized at the uh, national level. Now, since the, the, the professional was, was on, the profession was new, 
Um, the sector has invested so much on training of staff members because some of the libraries were run by, um, I can say by semi-professionals or people who actually did not have qualification in the library sector. So the sector has invested so much in training the staff members so that they become professional librarians. So the, some of the challenges that we faced in the country in the past is that, you know, we had acute shortage of senior staff members to take over the leadership position. And much of these skills, we have to outsource it from um, other countries. And then the good thing that was done is that um, if we get a senior staff member from elsewhere, then uh, we'll have an understudy who will go through training um, from the professionals that came outside the country. So training on leadership was not really much of a priority by then because priority was put or the emphasis was more on, on getting um, our personnel attaining their qualifications, training them on different library skills and all that. Now, in, uh, in the year 2015, um, the Namibia Library and Archive Service identified actually the need for leadership skills among librarians and all other staff members. And what was done is that we have partnered with the Mortensen Center for International Library Programs to implement the Strengthening Innovative Library Reader Training Program. And this was a project funded by the Global Library Program of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So this training was done in a way that we needed to train our local trainers so that they can train other staff members. And in total, 15 local trainers were trained by the staff members from Mortensen Center on um, leadership styles for librarians, on library leaders as innovators, library leaders as planners, library leaders as communicators. So, after the 15 trainers were trained, they in turn trained around 121 public librarians across the country. Now, um, I'm, I'm happy that uh, we have Aline who spoke about Aphelia. We also have five or more of our librarians that attended actually Aphelia programs, those ones that were mentioned earlier. And the result um, for the programs that are done by Aphelia were very impressive. We can see, you know, the trained staff members taking up new roles, trained staff members actually contributing uh, differently when they are trained. You can see that something um, has really put in them and they are taking up initiatives. Now, in the year 2020, we um, I'm now going back to the uh, association. Um, I've spoken about what we have done uh, from the public library services, uh, being a deputy director for the Namibia Library and Archive Service. In the year 2020, we have done a, a skill survey for the, for the association. And one can really see that, you know, the skills of, um, of the members really varies. You can see from the top there, computer skills, people are so um, exposed to different experience and skills. And when we ask which of those skills and experience can you confidently say you have acquired to date, you see down there, the very second um, bar from below, the leadership and supervision skill is, is very, very low. So what we have done um, in response to that survey, we have now introduced the leadership training um, to the association. So the same training that was done by Mortensen Center with a bit of modification, we have introduced it to the um, association members. And the response from the members were very positive. I think it's the first time ever that you know, the association is getting this kind of training on, on leadership. But as we observed, we would see that there was a need for advanced leadership programs um, on leadership. So some of the leadership skills that we have observed in Namibia that we think our um, librarian will need, it's uh, management and strategic planning. And I think it's the same skills that uh, Aline actually has, has spoken about. These are the same trainings that Aphelia or Ineli is giving. 
Uh, and we also say that, you know, this, there are gaps in, uh, in skills and experience of our staff members. So team management, interpersonal skills, change management and innovation, very key. Communication and negotiation skills. Um, we have realized that much of the services that we offer now need to really be negotiated because um, the cost of uh, services very is, is becoming high day and day. So librarians need to have these negotiation skills actually to in order for them to get the best out of the negotiation. And then financial planning and management. Those are some of the key skills that we feel um, our senior staff members the country. Now, the way forward is for the um, association, what we are planning to do, we want to strengthen the uh, mentorship programs and also to expose our members to continuous leadership trainings. And this can be done locally or we have to partner with some other organizations that are actually offering the same training that we'll see or they will be of value to our members. And then we also um, would like to motivate our members to take up leadership roles and identify self gaps. Because many a times we're trying to in introduce new trainings, but it's also for our staff members that we are yeah, encouraging them to say, I lack in this area and this is the kind of training I would want to attend. So with that, I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I think um, I have given you the um, picture of how leadership looks like in the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, Namutenya. You, pro you have provided us uh, a very insightful look into how a country can bring leadership opportunities to the members from the library association through partnering as well. We, we see that as a really good trend. Um, Alim shared about Ineli and Namibia also uh, is sharing about partnering with the Mortensen Center funded by the Gates Foundation. And this is beautiful. They did train 15 people that multiply and transform into 121 across the country. So this is a way of doing things and bringing leadership. We want to share this with the world and that's where we're doing this webinar. Um, and, and we see that uh, Namibia as part of the um, big uh, Aflia family has also uh, benefit from the leadership opportunities. Uh, thank you so much. I hope this information can help other countries. And now we would like to see if uh, Nazim um, is with us, back with us. Yes, I am. Welcome. We're very glad mm. to that you join us today. I still remember um, the IFLA Congress in Cape Town. So welcome Cape Wonderful. Town. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be here, and I want to thank Loida for inviting us to be part of this, and to Magdalena as well for, for all of the assistance. My apologies for some of the technical glitches earlier. Um, but yeah, really wonderful to be here and to be part of this conversation. Um, I am Nazim Hadi, as um, Loida has indicated. I am the current president of um, the Library and Information Association of South Africa, LIASA. And um, I, I'm here to, to do a presentation on what we have done, are doing, or intend to do in, in terms of leadership and diversity. Um, so I, I want to start off and say that um, LIASA's vision um, is, is striving to unite, develop, and empower all people um, within the allies field um, into an organization that provides dynamic leadership. Um, and in turn, we hope that that obviously will transform, develop, and support library and information services for all people in South Africa. And I think that statement alone speaks to the importance that both leadership as well as diversity um, actually features within LIASA. It's always been something that we take very seriously and that we endeavor to actually give effect to. 
Uh, in terms of, of the role of LIASA, um, this year we celebrate in 25 years. I think that speaks um, volumes, I think. Um, and, and part of, of what we have done over this 25 years is to provide leadership, to advocate for libraries, to be the official voice for library and information services in South Africa, and also to ensure that LIS is firmly on the national agenda. And in this period of time, we've also been awarded professional body status. Um, again, I think something that speaks to, to the caliber of what and who Liasa is. In terms of its core values, again, I think showing how leadership plays an important role um, within the association as well as diversity. Um, I, I've just picked out the three that I think speaks to what we are speaking about today, and that is providing leadership excellence to the LIS profession, both nationally as well as internationally, acknowledging and respecting the diversity and individuality of all people, and leading the development and growth of the LIS profession through excellence. I, I want to say to, to, to the speakers, you know, before this, I think we, we as South Africa and this, as the ASA, we have had the privilege of having um, a president of AFLIA um, in two terms. Um, and I think that speaks volumes in, in terms of that core value that's stated at the beginning, um, as well as, for example, the Anneli program. Uh, we have the ASA members who've been part of the program. Some of those members are part of our um, structures, um, leading structures as well. And, and I think that speaks volumes for how we across the African continent are collaborating and working together to give effect to what we're actually talking about here today. In, in terms of leadership opportunities that the ASA has been involved in, um, uh, and I think continuing thread through my talk is that leadership has always been at the forefront of what the ASA um, seeks to provide its members in terms of opportunities. So in the past, we've had the South African Library Leadership Project. Um, this was a program that was done in collaboration with the Mellon Foundation, um, as well as the Mortensen Center. And, um, and obviously, it, it aimed to create the next cohort of leaders I myself am a product of the SALT project. Um, I was part of the, I think it's the second cohort of people who went over to the United States and benefited from this program. And um, as well as um, Mandla Tumbela, who has been both the LIASA president as well as the AFLIA president, um, has also been part of this project. Um, a couple of years later, we had a Carnegie grant for training public librarians, specifically those in libraries where um, they had received um, Carnegie grants. And while it wasn't specifically about leadership, um, I think it played a good role. And, and like the previous speaker said, you know, these projects and these programs provided a platform for people to be excellent and to lead and excel within the arenas in which they actually work. Um, what is very important in terms of, of leadership opportunities within the ASA is the role of our branches and our interest groups within our structures. Um, they provide this type of training, um, either through, through training opportunities um, in terms of webinars, which is much of what we've become used to over the last time, and, and as well as seminars, our um, the ASA conference also plays a very important role in providing these opportunities um, to our members. Uh, looking towards the future, um, LIASA is currently in the process of restructuring. This is a conversation that started in 2016 and we quite a, quite a road along. It's taken us a bit longer to actually, you know, get to the end of this road, um, I think COVID like with many other things, have played a big role in, in creating stumbling blocks in this regard. But looking towards the future and, and part of our restructuring, a very important part of, of what we're aiming to do is the Liasa Academy. Um, it is formerly known as the Clear Walker 
um, academy for uh, leadership and um, and and short shortened we just call it the Liasa Academy. But the academy aims to address some of the following objectives, and that's the training and the skills development needs of the LIA sector, contributing towards capacity building of Liasa structures and its members, and providing development opportunities for the sector. And very much those things speak to leadership um, moving into the future. And leadership has indeed been identified as one of the core streams that the academy's programs needs to address. Um, this speaks to a formal leadership development program, and it's good to actually be sitting here this afternoon and listening to my other learned colleagues and how they have tackled this. And, and, and obviously the, the aim of, of having these sessions um, so that we can learn from each other and not reinvent the wheel. And we're hoping that this program with, with the aid of other people and other skills that come to the fore, we'd be able to implement in the next year or two. Um, one of the other things in terms of the future is the formation of a student chapter. Um, it's something that's been a much needed forum within LIASA, something that we haven't really tackled, but we've always spoken about. It obviously speaks to the future leadership of the profession as well as the association. Um, it, it was something that was really started in the previous term of office, um, but we're now on the way to looking at formalization and implementation of the student chapter. And we are hoping that this will then spur on the march towards creating new leadership um, for both the profession as well as the association. Um, I think from a diversity point of view, I think we've always been like any other library association, anybody can stand to be president. Um, but I think there's a recognition that we really need to start right at the beginning with our students, molding and modeling them to take up these leadership roles, um, much as, as we've seen in the previous presentation. Um, and, and that being an important part of what we're wanting to do going into the future, then obviously speaks to the need to have um, leadership programs being in place. So in conclusion, I would just like to say that um, developing leaders and harnessing leadership potential remains, has always been and remains at the forefront of the ASIS vision. Um, diversity itself is a core to the ideals of the association. And I believe that through the establishment of the academy, uh, we will be aiming to continue speaking to these two ideals. Um, I do thank you for, once again for the opportunity. Um, please connect um, with me um, either via email um, that is on the screen or via Twitter. Um, and I look forward to engaging with everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nazim. Um, you have introduced us to something very important that I haven't seen in, in the webinar so far, and this is the fourth webinar. It doesn't mean that the other associations don't have it, but it's great to see on the screen that the vision and the core values of an association includes uh, this about uh, diversity and including inclusion, including everyone. Uh, spell it out like that. And I'm sure there are many other associations that include it, but um, it's a great example for others that perhaps not have it uh, to see it and um, adapt that, include it in their own associations. Um, the, the, the new thing that grabbed my attention here was the student chapter. Um, and, and, you know, the ALA has uh, student chapters across the nation and they are very successful in, in engaging um, new librarians and also preparing them uh, through leadership. Um, and um, there are some library associations that even uh, consult them uh, in certain occasions. So they make sure that they include their input in the uh, processes. So that is wonderful. Um, you also mentioned something about grants. And um, we know that funding is important. Uh, other examples, uh, including um, funding from uh, uh, foundations. And so grants are also important. They might be a little time consuming, but 
um, that also help us to bring uh, leadership opportunities. And um, of course, the Eliaza Academy and, and, and um, the different examples you presented. So uh, thank you so much. And this is why we're doing again this webinar to share with the world examples and different ideas so everybody can benefit. Thank you. Now we're going to move to the, um, then our next section. And this section is interactive conversations. Please uh, join a different uh, interactive room and um, we have them in English and French and Magdalena Gomolka will explain us how this work. Yeah, thank you, Loida. Uh, well, uh, we would like to invite you to this interactive part of our webinar, a conversation in interactive breakout rooms. Um, uh, for a moment, I will open our room so where you can choose uh, which room would you like to, go, to come. And in the room, every room, room has a moderator and moderator um, invite you and uh, give you a short uh, tips how to use uh, a Jamboard because we will work on it. And we will have 15 minutes for discussions. Uh, our discussion will be about leadership, about project, about the needs, about the recommendation and Okay, so uh, I give me a few seconds for open the rooms. And today with me, uh, there are uh, Paria and Maria and I, we will have rooms uh, in English. Unfortunately, something was wrong with our colleague Asan, uh, who was a moderator for the French uh, room. So I really apologize for this situation. So please now choose English room and uh, come to us. And if a son uh, will come, I will let you know. But uh, give me a few seconds for open the room. You should see uh, information from the Zoom. And uh, you can choose I opened the room and you can see information that you can choose which room would you like to go. So please uh, give a few seconds for the Zoom uh, to open and you can choose which uh, room would you like to go. Yeah, our participants who didn't join, so please feel free. Uh, we promise to have a really friendly atmosphere and talk more. So, okay, if you have any problems, please write down on the chat. I'm, I need to go to, to my room. Thank you. I see that the um, interactive rooms are closing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So people should be coming back or are they back? Uh, I think that they, they backed already and we are here on, in the main room. Uh, and Paria and Maria, are you with us? Because it will be our our part. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, okay so, Lordia, could we start and uh, give a short uh, summary of our discussions? Yes, please. Welcome back. Okay, so thank you everyone who participated in our discussions and uh, we had three rooms and uh, a few, uh, a short summary, a few words uh, about our discussions because it's this topic about leadership. It's very interesting and very important uh, for all of us. And it was also mentioned in, uh, in my room. Uh, that uh, we need to develop and we need to remember about continuous development, uh, especially librarians uh, who have contact, who work with uh, children, teenagers and adults and seniors. And um, in our group, we didn't find a very professional project which is focused on developing leadership skills, but um, uh, my participants see that uh, it's very important and they try also in their countries uh, to uh, develop their skills. They organize annual conferences uh, where many librarians can meet 
and uh, and uh, talk each other. Um, my participants mentioned about other projects in IFLA in last years uh, with section CPWL uh, had a, a coaching session uh, organized on last IFLA conference and also uh, online coaching in last months, uh, which uh, allowed uh, librarians from all the countries to talk uh, with another person and to be in time to, to develop and uh, try to find a new way. So uh, yes, it's very important. And uh, because also we, as librarians, we need to uh, remember about our ICT skills, about digital literacy, about information literacy and trainings uh, in, uh, during our daily daily work. And we also measure about two forms, about coaching and mentoring. It's very important for us. And Paria? Um, we sort of ran out of time. I think we were having too much fun with our photos, which is good. It was a good icebreaker. But uh, we did discuss some of the practices that are happening in the libraries. Um, and I think some of them might also work for needs or recommendations. So what we were talking about <clears throat> that having a mentorship program that some libraries right now have it, and it's very helpful to develop leadership, um, leading by examples. Um, you know, you have a leader, you're leading by an example. That's, that's a great way to develop leadership. Communicating is always very important. So it's a practice that's happening in some libraries and it's a good recommendation. It needs to happen in all libraries. Teamwork because it helps identify strengths and weaknesses. And uh, we also had ethical behavior. So these were some things that were happening already in the libraries, but I really think that they also fit with recommendations and needs later on. Yeah. Thank you, Paria. So um, at, the, uh, on, at, at our webinar, in this webinar, uh, at the end, I will share the link to our survey and our participants if didn't have time uh, and also have another thought to, they can uh, write down in the survey any comments also. And Maria. Hi, so uh, we also have uh, had some fun with the photos. But we also managed to write something down regarding these three clouds. So regarding the practice, we also uh, said that uh, always is good uh, to show leadership, uh, leadership skill by example. Uh, some libraries do not have any special programs and uh, some libraries have, uh, for example, exposure to some aspects of uh, 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 Chassis own leadership program for the students. So there are some program for the students and introducing students with that program is also a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding recommendation, uh, we heard about uh, different uh, INELI programs, uh, uh, good international programs uh, like uh, IFLA had and uh, exposing uh, exposure uh, retooling in data management for decision making, for example. And regarding the needs, uh, we all uh, concluded to that we have some uh, lack of needs such as communication skills, uh, uh, advocacy skills, uh, feed and needs are uh, our colleague one uh, pointed feedback, feedback and more feedback. Uh, again, uh, developing uh, negotiation skills, it's also important. So that's uh, short from uh, my group. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Great discussion. And that's it. Thank you, Maria and Paria for moderating and uh, our participants uh, uh, for the discussion. And I give microphone to Loida. Thank you so much, everyone participating in the interactive rooms. Um, definitely uh, the needs and recommendations and um, your thoughts are being recorded and they will be part of the overall resources we're going to share on our website um, leading up to the MLAS 
program in Dublin. So thank you so much. Um, I uh, We are actually uh, tweeting some of these highlights and the hashtag is IFLA leadership. Now we are coming back to our presentations and our next speakers are um, Samuel Bentil Agre and Lynn Gibril. And they are going to speak about uh, experiences about leadership and also uh, perhaps recommendations and uh, good practices. And we are going to welcome now Samuel Bentil Agri. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we see Just your like presentation. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much and good afternoon to everyone. And thanks for inviting me. I must thank the organizers and all who are working in the background and carrying our profession forward. I'm presenting on seasoned librarian new to leadership. And currently I'm the senior librarian at the University of Ghana Accra City Campus and the immediate past president of the Ghana Library Association. So this will be the outline of my presentation. So we'll look at leadership positions in the Ghana Library Associations. The ones I've highlighted in red, those are elective positions and they serve on what we call the council. That is the highest decision body apart from the general uh, members that meet at a, a Congress. And it's open to all, you only need to be, uh, to have been, a, spent three years in, as a member when it must be in good standing and it's open to everyone who qualifies. And it's an elective uh, uh, position. Then the ones in, in blue, a uh, combination of com uh, committees and journals and newsletter. And then we have regional representatives, which are also open and the, and the welfare. So we have the slots there, the ones, the figures that choose the membership. And the rest are open up uh, to as many that can be in for the journal, for example, you have the chief editor and all that uh, uh, team that supports it. So this open for all the citizen uh, librarians to, to, to participate. My experience, and uh, I am blessed to have gone through, uh, starting from the one committee that is the uh, ERT, the Education and Research Training uh, committee. In other words, I always say I was co-opted by the then chair, who later became the president. That is uh, Professor Dazi, and I'm happy she's on the platform now. She saw some of us as young and uh, uh, co-opted us to serve. And we, I served with the current president, uh, Mrs. Comfort Asari. I also handled the newsletter for a while. And as I see for doing a, a good job and you are being pushed up. So I've, I served as the vice president for two terms and a, a professor that, and then I became the, the president for another two terms, which is a four year. And currently I'm serving as the immediate past president of the association. And I must say, uh, for me, I always look at the good side of it. It was really fun. Uh, hard work, uh, most of the time, determination uh, uh, to carry on, despite at certain times you feel like uh, uh, giving up, but it's all good for seven colleagues and our association. Then at the job uh, at level from 2002, uh, I I worked at, at the medical school library. Uh, there I spent uh, most of the time close to uh, 16 years there with uh, later on moved to the College of Health Sciences. So handling the cataloging uh, unit and then moving on to handle the ICT. And presently I'm the head uh, librarian at the Accra City campus of the same university, University of Ghana. Uh, approximately so only just uh, 20 years and we are still counting. 
Now, we've just put in this slide for us all to look at for the season most of us have gone through it and we keep on uh, going through training at workshop conferences to better ourselves. Some of it is direct. Uh, you find uh, leadership things in that association or wherever we've gone to that we've been introduced to. Peer learning is key, the same as learning on the job. And we pick a lot of things from colleagues, from our seniors and from our juniors. And mentorship, uh, I keep on saying that I'm blessed to have former presidents who are willing to support me. And anytime you call on them, they come in you know, to, to help. Self-adventure is also another thing that we need to have and to learn to keep us uh, going where you have no one to support you. You have to set the ball rolling. Then as a reminder, the association is there uh, regional with a COVID, we have to be before you COVID, we even have to team up with other associations on the continent that we invite, and they also occasionally in, invite us when they are doing uh, training. And AFLIA has always been our a, a backbone together with uh, IFLA. Uh, I nearly also came in from time to time to help. For what I have participated in, uh, this was a tough one, but I managed to, what I could easily remember, uh, for the Ghana Library Association, when we have a new council, you will have to go through an orientation, a two-day uh, orientation. I can remember going through four of them, and usually we bring in the past executives to help us to reorient those of us who are coming in new. The association also has organized programs, uh, as I said, some are direct some on leadership, marketing, budgeting, advocacy, and you see this part of uh, the, the leadership that you, you need to have. And through one of the true uh, trainings in uh, South Africa uh, with our leaders, uh, Dr. Samu Hassan and Dr. Okoji, uh, were able to, with their support, able to get funding from, from IFLA. And for the first time, we trained uh, our regional re representatives, uh, apart from the national group, those who handle our affairs in the regions, there were uh, 12 of them that we brought them together for training on leadership and how to handle affairs at the regional level. At the international scene, participated in the Carnegie program, uh, the first one in 2014, I was part of the first batch. We went through some uh, leadership issue, the next librarian and then uh, librarian and then uh, innovation. Uh, uh, it was really quite interesting and very practical. I also went through uh, SDGs and AU you know, uh, agendas, part of the, we're just two trainer of trainers and we came back from Cameroon and then South Africa to help our colleagues. And we mounted a lot of training on the SDGs and then AU. Uh, uh, agenda. Then through one of the, I think that uh, the Cameroon one, we were able to get training where we brought in librarians from English speaking and French speaking West Africa for close to uh, uh, three days or so in 2017, all through the funding from, from AFLA and they went through uh, leadership you know, issues and how to handle their associations. And I've benefited from webinars by uh, Aflia and then uh, IFIL on leadership. Best practices, I would say, we should have standards uh, based on values. We should work with ethics and attitudes. If our attitudes do not change what we used to do in the past, we cannot keep it, we need to uh, change it. The same for skills and then the knowledge. It's changing and it's improving, and we need to have the skills to handle it. We need to also know trends that will uh, happen, and the new frontiers that are coming. And all that we have, whatever we're able to put together, it needs to be reviewed uh, as we move along. And then especially, it must suit our local uh, conditions. For recommendations, we'll keep on advising ourselves, those who are up there or seasoned who have not been part of uh, the association, we will say uh, it should be personal uh, development always. You take the first step 
and you must play roles, active roles in our associations. Uh, some have come in and they've stepped back. Some have never also come in. We are all uh, part of the, uh, the group, uh, the profession, and we must give our best to rate. We must also show interest and then participate. Some will show interest, but will not participate. And that is uh, uh, worrying. Well, uh, we should, associations should also have a formalized ways of engaging, engaging. So we are all together. The seasoned ones must be brought together formally and in, informal ways and getting everybody uh, on board. And then after that, we should have standards that everybody must go through or most of us must go through on leadership. And this can cut across our associations. Uh, then we keep on asking if we have the support associations to take the lead. The leadership has now come back to the fore. Uh, AFLIA and IFLA, we need leadership uh, support for training and on diversity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Samuel. You shared with us really interesting and important um, points. And, and one that sticks out is um, some sort of uh, self-motivation to develop ourselves that is central to this leadership um, uh, path that everyone is trying to follow. Um, and then you also mentioned something I've heard in different webinars, learning on the job that happens and we embrace it. Uh, and it's also important integral part of, of this journey. Uh, peer learning, mentorship, and um, the local connections, how we can relate uh, what we are receiving and all these opportunities to also our local reality. And finally, I want to, I want to mention something that you um, said about self-adventure, uh, how to you know, keep us going and that our, us, ourselves, we can keep us um, going and, and that is um, central to our journey. So thank you so much. Um, all this will be also shared on our reports. And now I would like to welcome uh, Lynn Gibral. And she is coming from uh, Botswana. Welcome. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, good morning, yes. good afternoon. <clears throat> oh, let me put on the camera. Okay, once again, good morning, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, thank you very much for having me on this webinar. Uh, it is such a pleasure for me to be here this afternoon. Um, as I have been introduced, my name is Lynn Gibril, and I am the president of the Botswana Library Association. And I'm going to share with you my journey into where I am right now. I started uh, working some many years back, more than 25 years back. And when I was first sent to my, or when I was first posted to go and work in a small village in the Southern part of the country, my school head at the time saw some of my characters and then deemed it fit that if I were to be put in a library environment, I'm going to make a good librarian in the future. And that is how I took the first step to become a librarian. And I'm glad to say that uh, I have proven that person to be right. Um, like I have said, I am by no means new to librarianship. And um, my journey started back as a teacher in a secondary school in 1996, when I started teaching. I had no prior knowledge of what librarianship was, and I have not participated in any library program, sorry, in any leadership program. And uh, as I went into this field that was quite new and strange to me, I went in, of course, with a lot of excitement, and I realized that a passion alone, alone will not carry me anyway. And therefore, I started seeking for opportunities 
and I attended workshops that were organized by the National Library then and the Ministry of Education. And uh, I went around and benchmarked with the many uh, schools that I thought had good libraries, uh, the many secondary, junior secondary schools, senior secondary schools, as well as tertiary, uh, tertiary uh, schools, where I was actually looking for what appears to be the best library so that I could learn and maybe take, uh, take some lessons from there. I, I then underwent several internship programs that I initiated and participated in hands-on practical events and volunteered in many at several institutions and establishments. My aim was to realize that uh, I've entered into a profession that needed some qualifications which I didn't have. And therefore I had to boost myself a little bit by really doing an extra learning for myself. And as a result, we ended up forming clusters in the region where I was to try and help one another because there were many of us who found ourselves running libraries without uh, any prior experience or any qualifications. So we formed some clusters where we would move from one place, one school to another, trying to um, establish libraries and help those that are existing but are not really very functional. So we ended up forming a library association for secondary schools in Botswana called Bosla. Uh, which I took a leading role in, in its formation. And uh, after forming that uh, uh, a library association, whose main aim was to really advocate for uh, trained librarians, librarians and for the improvement of school libraries and the recognition that library is key and central to learning and education. Uh, thereafter, I took the initiative to come up with a program, an information literacy program, because at some point we advocated for the role of the library, of the teacher librarian at a senior managerial level. And so in order for them, for the management to realize this, we needed to prove that there is just more than running the library that the teacher librarian ought to do. They ought to also be able to teach and guide learners and members of staff on the use of the library. And so we advocated for the position of a senior teacher librarian, which saw the green light. And then I was recommended to act in that position. I then decided, or I then was recommended to go for a certificate course in a certificate in school librarianship, uh, which I did. Uh, it was a short course that is offered by a vacation course that is offered by the University of Botswana. After tasting what librarianship is all about, I wanted more. I wanted more. I felt that really this is a profession that requires one to know what it is and what it entails. So I went for a degree in library and information studies, later on master's in library studies, and I'm currently a candidate of a PhD in library and information studies. Um, what, gives the, what gives me the motivation is the fact that I love this profession. I have fallen in love with this profession and I motivate myself. I believe in the power of knowledge and information. And so I go all the way out to read, to inform myself, to empower myself through knowledge because I've come to appreciate that knowledge is power. Is power. And as an educator, I also appreciate the fact that education is a lifelong process. There's never a time where you stop learning for as long as you are still alive. And that education is not an end in itself, but it's a means to an end. So I take pride in the many achievements or the many projects that I initiate on my end. In 2012, I started a project with one school where I transformed it completely from being a traditional library into a modern day type of a library with technology, technology to help assist learners to learn and the members of staff to learn. And so in 2013, I applied for the Silip IFLA Aspire Award, which I got, and I went to go, I got to go to IFLA for the first time. And that opened my appetite really wide for librarianship and I never looked back since then. And I will recommend now that all heads of uh, uh, all heads of libraries, or maybe before I come to recommendation, I must say that uh, a hard work, hard work pays, and that 
we should never give up. There will be challenges along the way, but if you believe in yourself and believe that you can, then you have to keep on going and inspire others. Also, you have to believe that, or you have to be willing to learn new things because librarianship is a fast growing profession. It changes from time to time. You should be will willing to learn new things and unlearn the old ones and be open to change and appreciate that change is inevitable. Whether you like it or not, it will come and you have to run along with the winds of change. And you also have to be able to towards achieving your dream and actualizing your dream because just dreaming alone is not enough. Um, like I said, I, I, I take pride in, uh, uh, I take pride in, in, uh, in the achievements that I see because I, I, I volunteer and whenever I volunteer, I get to get fulfillment. I get to be fulfilled by the results that I get. And I must say that uh, I, I, one of the things that have made me to be able to speak here is because even though I'm not new to leadership, and I'm not new to the profession is because when I was approached, I didn't say no. I said, there must be something that I can offer that I can share with my professional from my professions. Because like I say, I take pride in empowering others and I take pride in, in volunteering because I know at the end of the day, there will be something that you will take away from uh, your efforts of uh, volunteering. And uh, my recommendation is that, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry for the mix up. I wanted to, to just a minute. Oh my, what have I done? Okay, I can't see the slide, but I wanted to say my recommendation is that all heads of or all presidents of library association should be part of the a management of library association to just give them that exposure of what is happening in the library field, in the library sector, to get them out of where they are or the comfort zone, if you like, to network with uh, an international or a pool of professionals and expertise to learn from. So even if they are not going to be uh, taking any managerial positions, but being in the committee and getting in touch with what other library associations are doing, I think is very key. And I think leaders should be bold and take bold steps and lead from the front and provide insights. As I say, I really want to be thankful to my school head then when I started because he saw something in me that I didn't know. And I am where I am because of him and I really want to appreciate. And I want to say to leaders, know your members of staff, know your members and inspire them and lead by example. And that will surely take our profession a lot far. Of course, all these things that I've said are not without challenges. There will be challenges, of course, on the way, like you get people resisting, people who don't want to volunteer, and people who just don't share your dream. You will be dreaming about something, you know, seeing something at the end of the light. But it's not everybody who will see the sense that you see. And so resilience, um, commitment and a perseverance will take us there. And so I want to say to leaders, uh, we have a challenge and our challenge is to make sure that we leave a legacy behind that everybody will be able to appreciate to say, uh, so so or Lynn was here and this is what she has she has built a library association that we can be proud proud of I want to end by thanking you for have, have, having had me in this webinar it was such a pleasure and I hope my experience will inspire somebody to say I'm not a director where I work I am just a librarian but I am a president everybody can be a president it just depends on your approach and on how you look at the bigger picture. Commitment, hard work will surely take us there. Making the library uh, the new electricity of today and making sure that the library takes its place as um, 
as advocates or, and, or as, as participants in the national agenda and ensuring that we don't leave anybody be behind. We carry everyone along with us and we have the knowledge society that we all aspire to have. Thank you so much. I am really, really appreciative of this opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, Ling. This has been really a, a, a refreshing uh, way of ending our webinar today. Um, you have touched in aspects that um, I've seen uh, mentioned by others during the webinar. So it means that it's important, this, this self-drive, the um, uh, never stop growing, looking uh, ahead for new adventures as our other uh, colleague, presented, but you also mentioned something. Um, if there is a need, we can join forces with others and create uh, something to in response to that need, as it was what you um, developed, the BOSLA organization uh, for the teacher librarian development. And so that's very important. That's what we did with the IFLANO professionals. This was the need. And um, we got together with other new librarians when Keira Seroka was the president. So this was uh, some years ago. And she supported the creation of the new librarians. And it, it's happened. And well, it's been in place since 2004. You also mentioned something very important that um, Often in this in this type of work in this path, people are receive are are some you know you kind of like lower your energy. Uh, uh, but you mentioned that it's important that we stay uh, focused, right, with resilience, commitment, and perseverance. And it's not always easy for everyone, but you have encouraged um, everyone here to continue. And this is great. We need to encourage each other, each other, empower each other. So working hard, learning new things, and open to change. Thank you so much, uh, Ling, and every one of our speakers. We have reached the end of our uh, event, and I want to share my screen one last time. OK. Because I want to, uh, first, I want to thank again, each one of our speakers representing Library Association, each one of our leaders sharing best practices and their journey to leadership. And I want to thank the new librarians from IFLA, the new professionals behind scenes making this possible and each one of the moderators of the interactive rooms. Now I want to invite you to our next webinars. They will cover the regions of Latin America and Caribbean in the Asia and Oceania regions. And those will be in June, stay tuned. The announcement will be out on the IFLA list, on the Twitter of IFLA uh, MLAS, and also on the Facebook page of the IFLA Management of Library Associations. Thank you so very much. I wish you all the best for a great season. Thank you.